Hi and welcome to the video on graphing polynomials. Here we're asked to write the polynomial p of x equals x cubed minus x squared minus 5x minus 3 as a product of its factors. Then we're asked to sketch the graph of the polynomial. Let's write the polynomial as a product of its factors. We begin by working out the factors of the constant minus 3. This will give us some values to substitute into p of x in order to find an answer of 0. Remember the remainder theorem any value of x that gives us an answer of 0 will be a factor. So the factors of minus 3 are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. You might have to check a couple of them before you get an answer of 0, but I know that if we substitute in minus 1, we get an answer of 0. This means that x plus 1 is a factor. Now I'm going to divide into the polynomial. I'm going to divide x plus 1 into p of x. I begin by working out how many times x goes into x cubed. That's x squared times, and I put that above the x squared. Next I multiply x squared by x to get x cubed, and x squared by 1 to get plus x squared. Now I can do a subtraction. Subtracting the x cubes, they disappear, and minus x squared minus x squared gives me minus 2x squared. I'm going to bring down my minus 5x and I'm going to repeat my process. I work out how many times x goes into minus 2x squared, which is minus 2x. Then I multiply minus 2x by x to get minus 2x squared, and minus 2x times 1 to get minus 2x. Now it's time for subtraction. Minus 2x squared minus minus 2x squared will give me 0, and minus 5x minus minus 2x gives me minus 3x and I bring down my minus 3. Finally, I work out how many times x goes into minus 3x, that's minus 3 times, and then minus 3 times x gives me minus 3x, and minus 3 times 1 gives me minus 3. Last subtraction. The minus 3x's will cancel out, and the minus 3's will cancel out, giving me no remainder, meaning that x squared minus 2x minus 3 is a factor of p of x. What I can do now is factorize x squared minus 2x minus 3 to get x plus 1 and x minus 3, and then I finish off by writing the polynomial as a product of its factors using x plus 1 all squared times x minus 3. Now it's time to sketch the graph of the polynomial. To do this, I need to know what my x-intercepts are. That happens when p of x equals 0. Luckily, I wrote out p of x as a product of its factors, meaning that it's easy to find the x-intercepts of minus 1 and 3. Because minus 1 is a double root, we're going to see something interesting happen when x equals minus 1. Next, I'm going to look at the y-intercepts when x equals 0. So p of 0 is going to give me an answer of minus 3. So I have my x-intercepts and I have my y-intercepts. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to test values on either side of my roots, either side of my x-intercepts. This is going to tell me where the graph is above and below the line. So to begin with, I might test something that's less than minus 1 to see what's happening with the graph at that point on the graph. I'm going to choose p of minus 2. Substituting that into my graph, my polynomial, I get an answer of minus 5. This is an answer that is less than 0, so the values of my graph below minus 1 are below the x-axis. Between minus 1 and 3, I'm going to choose 0 again because I already know that p of 0 is minus 3. So p of 0 is less than 0. This tells me that between minus 1 and 3 is also below the x-axis. Finally, I'm going to test something bigger than 3. I'm going to test p of 4. That gives me an answer of 25. That is a positive number, meaning that the graph above, when x is greater than 3, will be above the x-axis. So now I know what's happening on either side of my roots. I know where my y-intercept is. Now I'm going to graph my polynomial. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to plot my x-intercepts at minus 1, 0. You can see that here. And 3, 0. You can see that there. They're my roots. Next, I'm going to plot my y-intercept which is at 0, minus 3. And then I'm going to try and draw my graph. I know for x values less than minus 1, I'm going to be below the x-axis. I know that between minus 1 and 3, my graph is going to also be below the x-axis, meaning that my graph is going to have to come up towards minus 1 
and then bounce back down. I know that after x equals 3 up here, my values for y, my values for my polynomial, are going to be above the x-axis. So let's take a look. I start in the negative side of the x-axis, and when I hit negative 1, it bounces back down towards negative 3 on the y-axis. I cut through my y-intercept, and I know at some point I'm going to have to bounce back up towards the 3 on the x-axis. At this point, it's not important where that minimum turning point is, but we will teach you how to find this point later on. The graph continues up to 3 and cuts through the x-axis at 3 and continues on in the positive direction. This is now the graph of p of x equals x cubed minus x squared minus 5x minus 3. I hope this video has helped you to find the roots of a polynomial as well as the y-intercept and also help you to, in order to find the factors as well and know how to graph our polynomial in its entirety. Good luck.